Hello, my name is John Burns with Siemens, and in this short video, I will show you how easy it is to connect up the new Simicode Pro that supports Ethernet IP into a Rockwell network system. To start with, we've opened up the RS5000 uh, software, and in order to add a Simicode to the network, the first thing you need to do is register the Simicode to be able to uh, pick it as an available device. For Simicode, we have created an EDS file. So to register the EDS file into the system, you come up to the Tools menu, drop down to the EDS Hardware Installation Tool, and go through the process of their wizard software, and select the EDS file wherever you've located it onto your hard drive, and register it. At the conclusion of the registration process, the Simicode is now available as a device to load onto the network. So the process to loading it to the network is just like loading any other device such as an E300. You see, come down to the left hand tree and click on Ethernet and then right click. You can come up here and say I want to add a new module. The next screen comes up and here is all the different products that are available as a uh, selection for adding to the network. If we want to focus just on the Simicode, we come up to this search box and just start typing in the name Simicode and you'll see the Simicode comes up as a selection choice in the screen. Click Create and it now will add it as a device onto the network. There's three pieces of information that's required at this point. The first is to give the device a name. So we can call this a Simicode and then give it a IP address Say we have a fixed address of 192.168.1.12. And the third piece is now to set up the size of the data transfer window between the host PLC system and the Simicode. And we do that by clicking on the Change button. Once you click on Change, it'll come up here to a window, and you can select different size windows for the data transmission. And with the Simicode, our terminology for the size of window is referred to as a basic type. So say a basic type one has a window size of 10 inputs coming from the uh, Simicode back into the automation system and four bytes of output going from the PLC system down to the Simicode. If we want to change that to a different uh, size window, for perhaps we can go to a basic type two which changes it to, to a combination of four and two, or a basic type three, which is the traditional 20 and six, so 20 bytes coming from the Simicode back up to the automation system, and six bytes down to the Simicode for control. And the last one that's available is a basic type four. And in this one, we've opened up the input window size tremendously to 488 bytes coming from the Simicode back into the automation system, and then six bytes, again, from the automation system down to the Simicode for control uh, parameters. The 488 bytes are made up of first of 20 bytes of fully configurable data that you set up in the Simicode software, and then the remaining 460 bytes are fixed between two data sets of statistical value and measured values. So if we come in here and now say finalize and set up a basic type 3 and say OK, this now causes uh, controller tags to be created in the system architecture as well. So now that we've given it a name, given it an IP address and set up the size of the window, we now can click OK. And we have an extra name here. And now the unit is, is completed. And if you look, it's now been added under the Ethernet uh, folder as a device on the network. Again, as the same time that we've created this device, along with this device, we've also created now a series of controller tags. So if we go in and look at the controller tags, 
and slide down, you'll see we now we've set up a controller tag starting with semicode colon I1 and semicode colon O1. So on the input side, if we expand this out and expand again the data, you'll see 20 bytes of input data have now been assigned to these variables. And on the output side, based on the choice of a basic type 3, again, the data size is now 6 bytes. So there's your 20 and 6 that was described when you set up the unit. So that is the path for setting up the cyclical data for this system. Now that I've shown you how to do the cyclic communications with Simicode Ethernet IP, I also want to show you how we can do acyclic communication to gather even more information from the Simicode and provide it up to the automation uh, platform. So to facilitate acyclic communications, there's a couple of things that we did. Uh, first, we created some UDTs, or user data types. Then you see here in the left-hand column, I've got one that's called uh, device diagnostics, measured measurement object for our measured values, uh, statistical data. So those all three are providing information to the automation system from Simicode. The last UDT we created was for motor parameters. And so a small subset of motor parameters can now be written from the automation system down to the Simicode, such as changing full load amps or trip class, uh, such as information such as that. So to be able to do the uh, acyclic communications, the example I'm going to use is here, say, with the uh, measure values. Now, again, the name of this uh, UDT we created for two purposes. One, we said measurement object to say that it's going to be the measured values, and this number 97. The 97 refers to the class code that's going to be uh, requested to the Simicode from the Ethernet IP uh, host. And so as Simicode, here's a class code request for class 97, it knows to respond with its measured values data. So that's where that 97 and 96 and 98 numbers come from, is what is the Simicode going to respond when requested for that uh, particular information. So again, we start out with a UDT called measured values or measurement object. So the first thing we have to do now is create a controller tag of that type UDT. So if I look at my controller tags again, and I come down here, I'll have a controller tag that's called SIMO12, which is the device we were talking to on the network. And the we also called it now 97 measured object, but you can see over here on the right hand side, it's of type measurement object for the UDT. Now that we've created that controller tag, which more or less gives us a location where we can bring the information from the Simicode and put it into the automation or, uh, processor. The next is to actually call this or request this information, and we're going to do that via a message command. So what we did also in our sample project here is we created a program called SIMO 97 Measurement Object. So again, this is just a standard program. We named it this just to show that it's going to be going to get the measured values and that it was going to be using that class code 97 to request that specific data that the SIMO code would understand. So if I go and look at this subroutine, again, it's a simple command uh, message uh, statement. So if we look at the details of the message command itself, the way these work is basically you're going to supply uh, three main pieces of information uh, for this. One is who am I talking to or which semicode am I trying to get this information from? So if we go to the communication tab, this is where we identified we want the semicode that was called SIMO12 to provide this information. On the configuration tab, now we provide the two additional pieces of information. First is we know who we're getting, uh, who we're asking for from the information. Now we're going to ask what, we, what information are we requesting? And that's where this class code 97 comes into play. So no matter whether you're asking for measured values, statistical data, 
or the diagnostic data, the service code, instance, and attribute always stay the same. Those three variables always stay the same. So based on what you're asking for, in this case we're asking for the measured values, our class code is 97. And that means when the semicode is requested for that class code coming down the message telegram, it then will respond giving that message in, or measurement value information. So again, the second piece is what am I asking for, which is class code 97. The third piece is once I get that information, again, where am I going to store it in the autom automation architecture? And that's defined here in the destination element. And so here's where we that controller tag that we made of type UDT for measurement object. And so this gives it a location to be able to provide to to store that information coming from the semicode. So again, once we provide those three pieces of information and we execute this uh, message command, and we're just doing this on a cyclic type uh, clock basis, it would uh, provide that information into the automation architecture. That concludes this uh, video for this session. I hope you uh, were able to learn a little bit more about Simicode and its connectivity into the Ethernet IP uh, environment.